Hello, and welcome to this latest episode of the Miramichi Historical Linkages Podcast. Uh, I'm Sean McCarthy, joined here once again by Tasha Smith, our Indigenous Heritage Culture Researcher, and Sarah Ward, our Project Advisor, and our colleague, uh, Alison Perdi, uh, our Acadian Researcher, uh, is away this week. Uh, but we welcome you uh, to to this latest episode. And uh, again, encourage you, this is your first time watching, have a look back uh, at, our, at our past episodes and uh, again, all the guests that we've had lately. So because we've had, we've had a pretty good run of, of really interesting guests and one more uh, this week. Uh, so um, I couldn't find somebody from my family just yet. So Tasha and I are still are are, are still behind on that one. We've had uh, Ali's mom, we've had Sarah's husband. So uh, Tasha and I are kind of under the gun. But I've got my grade five teacher here today, uh, John Bosma, uh, to talk to us a little bit about some of the work that he's doing, Hing, and uh, again the importance of history uh, to him. So welcome, John. Thanks very much for joining us. Well, th- thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. So maybe, John, like I say, uh, just to maybe kind of start off with, and I know, like I say, from uh, uh, 1995, 1996, from grade five, uh, I know that history was a big part of of uh, what went on in 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 five B in the in the class that we had. Um, so maybe to kind of start off with. Um, What's kind of been your introduction to uh, the importance of history, and um, how does it influence you today? Well, I, I guess uh, when when you're growing up, you don't realize, except for you. I think you were an exception <laughs> that uh, history history was that big a part of you. Um, I, I guess I could say uh, that uh, when I touch on in grade five, uh, you know, he used to write. Uh, history essays, about 5,000 words for me. Uh, he was, uh, I had a, a really hard time uh, marking his papers because they were always so long, but uh, he was, you could tell, he was really, really, really involved in it. And he really, when we went to the library, I mean, you didn't see him. He was just researching uh, one book after another. Uh, but um, I, I wasn't doing that sort of thing when I was in grade five, but um Later on, uh, as I got older, uh, I realized that my mother was was into history, and, and I I, uh, I realized that, that I wanted to know more too, and uh, <clears throat> I, um, I actually uh, went to St. Thomas uh, uh, after Teachers College, uh, and I, uh, I majored in history, and that's uh, and I just loved it, and I and I loved the research, I loved the uh, doing the essays as much as Sean loved doing them in grade five, and. Um, uh, when I came out in 71, I applied at uh, what was then District 8 and District 10, District 8 being Newcastle, District 10 being Chatham, and applied for uh, a history job or to teaching history. And I heard back from the principal of James M. Hill, um, and he said that uh, he'd like to hire me, but they were under uh, work to rule and uh, they couldn't offer any jobs at that time. But when it was all over, he would be back, uh, get back in touch with me, and I said okay. And then I heard from the Newcastle side; um, it was actually the chairman of the school board who said she'd like to have students that went to Harkins come back and teach at Harkins. So, uh, uh, so I figured okay. And she said, um, "I have an interview. I'll book for you." And I said, "You do?" And I didn't say anything, but I, I thought they weren't allowed to do that. But anyway, she did. I had to go see the principal of Harkins Junior High, and. Um, uh, told my father, I said, I know what's going on. They're not supposed to be offering any jobs right now. He said, well, if they, if they said you could go, go. You know, you need a job. You know, I think he was probably anxious to see me get out of the house. Well, anyway, um, so I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll go and see. And I was all ready with my philosophy of education. I was all ready to, uh, you know, tell him what uh, what what I, I thought, you know, how education should be done. And I uh, actually, when, uh, and maybe this isn't very nice to say, but when I went to teachers' college, I learned more how not to teach than how to teach because some of the the teachers weren't all that great. And I thought, but sitting at the back of the classroom, I used to say, "I can do better than that." So I thought <laughs> it sort of inspired me to become a teacher. Anyway, so I went to the interview already, and all he said was, uh, "We have two cla- we have two classrooms, we have two classes here available, eight eight uh, C and eight G." He said, "Which one do you want?" I said, what? 
<laughs> I, I, I was expecting that. So I said, well, uh, what does A and G mean? Well, A is our top and G is, you know, near the bottom. And, and I thought, well, you know, I, I'd, li I'd like to work with the with kids that are having problems. So I said, uh, I'll t I would take G, but I said, I, I have to think about it. Oh, yeah, well, let me know tomorrow. And I said, okay. I went home. I said, I, I got this job offer, but I, I really want to teach history. It was for language arts. I really want to teach history. So my father said, you got a job? Take it. Yeah, but anyway. I thought about it and, uh, you know, and I, maybe, maybe he was anxious to see me leave. I don't know, but I said, okay, and I took the job. And, uh, and I taught history through language arts on many occasions, as Sean would know, because I would bring up uh, historical references. And uh, it was just about a, two weeks later, um, after I accepted the job, I got a call saying I could have had that history job in Chatham. And who knows what would have happened, but uh, I still I was still interested in history, even even though I had language arts. And I think that was the subject I was meant to teach. Uh, I, Sean probably remembers uh, I, I was sort of put into grade five from middle school. I didn't wasn't really ready for that, but that's where I was placed. And I think he got middle school English, if I'm not mistaken, Sean. <laughs> that's, that's that's the way I I thought about uh, teaching anyway at that time. So. Um, yeah, so then uh, as I got older, I, you know, I started, uh, didn't start writing. I wrote a lot of plays. I wrote about 50, over 50 one-act plays, but not all historical, although um, I don't see Sarah on there now. But uh, when uh, when I was in Eel Ground, we did a, a play about Canada through uh, through the eyes of First Nation. And uh, that, that was an interesting project. I really, li really liked doing that. And kids did research and I did research. But then um, I started writing um, uh, books about, well, it all started when I started seeing these stories about Miramichiers on uh, the heritage site. And I thought, gee, this is interesting. I said, I haven't got time to read them all. I was busy at the time. And so I just co would copy and paste them and, and, and I'll read them later. And then one came up about my father. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Maybe I should do a book with, including my father and all these other uh, Mary Shears that I was reading about. And so I, I had enough to do one book. And then I said, gee, I started seeing more. I uh, ended up uh, writing, well, not writing, editing, because they weren't all my stories, uh, editing 12 books. And I called the series Mary Mishy Lads and Ladies. Uh, I, I knew we were called lads of the Mary Mishy. I didn't know what the, what the I, I never ever heard anybody call a girl in Mary Mishy Lassie. So I thought, I'll just call them ladies. <laughs> and uh, and and in doing that, uh, you know, I did uh, I didn't just uh, I got a lot of stories from the heritage site, but I also did a lot of work uh, on the uh, in the archives in in Fredericton, uh, just online finding different stories, and uh, some of the stories were veterans, and I thought that, I thought they were really interesting. One of them was um, by book five, I think it was book book five or six. I had Wolf Gorman, who was an airman, and. Uh, he went through like you could do a movie on him. Uh, what he went through, he was he was captured. He was he got away. He was captured again. Uh, anyway, it was quite an interesting story. And then uh, when I finished those twelve, I, I stopped at twelve. I said I'm not doing any more. That's you know twelve's good, <laughs> good number. And I, I self published them, and I sold a few and I kept a few, and I kept a set for myself. But then um, I got thinking about the um, 19, in uh, 19, you know the seventy uh, fifth anniversary of the liberation of Holland. So I was born in Holland, and came over to Canada when I was six years old. I uh, didn't really think much about um, you know the liberation or about what happened. As but as I got older, I did more research into it, and I decided that uh, yeah, I I should do one more Miramichi Lads and Ladies book with veterans and just call it my liberation of Holland project. And I decided I would go to Holland in uh, 2020 to celebrate the 75th anniversary. I wanted to be there on May 5th when they were going to do that. But then as you know, uh, and I published the first book in 2019, I got that out of the way and decided that I didn't think that was enough. Like I, I, I got stories from other people. So I, I didn't feel like I should be making money on it. So I said, well, what will I do with, once I pay the books off, what will I do with the money? So I offered uh, two scholarships, at, uh, t uh, one at Miramichi Valley for 1000 and one at uh, Jameson Hill for 1000 And uh, 
And so because of that, Kathleen at the Mill Cove Coffee Shop, I don't know if you know her, but that's a great place to, to get some books and, and coffee. Uh, she she uh, didn't take any um, percentage off she because she knew I was uh, going to give the money away. Um, and then, um, yeah, so I, I did that and, and uh, couldn't go to Holland because, as you know, in 2019, something called COVID came along and it was canceled. Actually, they didn't even have a celebration in Holland that year. I thought maybe 2021. No, that didn't work out either. So I'm finally going uh, this year in April, May, and I'll be there for the 5th. But anyway, um, I did one book and decided hey, maybe I had enough stories to do another one. And I, 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 you know, I told people I was looking for stories, found, uh, found a lot more. And, and uh, uh, two people really helped me out was Gary Silliker. I'm sure his name has come up a few times, Sean. Mm -hmm. And uh, a, guy, a guy by the name of Bruce Morton. And what Bruce was doing was he was, uh, well, he has a book out called 100 Years on the North Shore Regiment. And he, um, he was doing stories on veterans. And I contacted him. I said, gee, could I use some of your stories? You know, because I figured he was going to do a book. No, he wasn't going to do a book with the stories. He was sending them to uh, the committee in Holland that were doing Faces uh, with Graves, where you send a picture of the soldier and a story. Uh, I've sent a few myself. And uh, he said, no, you can use whatever you want. And he started sending me one every week. <laughs> so it uh, still does, still, still doing that. Uh, we, we talk, uh, we talk a f on a few cases. We've had a, had a conversation about it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I got, really got involved in that. And uh, in April, I'm just going to finish at the end of this month. I'm going to have it all set to go to the printer. I'm doing book three, and that will be my final one. Um, I only found one lady. So I don't know if I can actually call it Miramichi Lads and Ladies, maybe. Uh, although I, I do have a story about uh, women and in, in, uh, the women, Canadian women at, at war. So I guess maybe I can get away with it. But anyway, um, yeah, that's how I got into that that end of it. And I'm still, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's been like a, a project dear to my heart because, you know, my, my mother and father and two sisters uh, survived the war, survived the occupation, and were liberated in 1945. They also hit a Jewish girl, which was in my first book. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just became really, really wrapped up into it, uh, more so than when I was just a kid. And uh, yeah, I guess that's basically where I'm at right now. And yep, I don't think there's that much more to say. Turning it over to you, Sean. <laughs> Well, like I say, John, it's, it's really important work. And I know, you know, even before you were doing this, this even before you were writing books and so on and so forth, I know, like I say, I, it was the first time, you know, 95, 96 was the first time I really kind of came to grips with our role in the Second World War as a global conflict. And I mean, just just the extent of that war. And when your father came in and spoke to us, you know, that was, mm -hmm. like I say, I mean, I don't think any of us really kind of understood the gravity of that of that conflict quite the same way after that as we you mm -hmm. know as we may have before so yeah no no it's 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 uh mm -hmm. very important work and, and very meaningful i think to many people yeah there's one story i have to tell uh, everybody else about you sean that was i think it was maybe, maybe the second he knows what's coming i think it was the second day I, I decided that, you know, I'm going to have all these kids. I'm going to teach all these subjects to these grade five kids. So I said, uh, and I knew how kids would forget their books or whatever. I said, okay, I want uh, every um, duotang uh, a color for each subject. So I think language arts was blue, math was red, and I think history was black for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, I had all these <laughs> different colors, and the kids had all these duotangs. So I said, okay, let's. Uh, we're going to trade. I want you each to have a different color do tank. So they started trading and it was a big schmazzle. And I said, this isn't a way to do it. I, I'm going to have to do it myself. So I said, stop, stop. Everybody back to your seat. No, I made a mistake. And this that's the first time I really recognized Sean, I think, as his hand went up. And I said, yes, uh, Sean. Yes, he said, that's the first time I ever heard a teacher say he made a mistake. <laughs> and I said, well, get used to it because I'm going to make plenty more, I'm sure. <laughs> So he kind of stood out right from the beginning. He's uh, he was, uh, and then he uh, he also became one of uh, a lead actor in a play. Oh, no, we did more than one play, didn't we, Sean? We did a few, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we did. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Let's get back to the topic. 
Yes, yeah. History of the river, not necessarily the history of, of poor old Sean McCarthy. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Um, exactly. That's it. That's it. I don't know. His colleagues are pretty <clears throat> interested in the Sha history of Sean. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, you mentioned about um, about teaching and stuff like that, and you mentioned ill ground. Were you, was I uh, your students mm -hmm. involved with the Kaiser Award in ill ground? Yes. Were you part yeah. of that, the Kaiser yes. Award? Yeah, that was the that was the that was the year we did the uh, there was a suicide in uh, that year and it decided we better do a play addressing that, and so uh, <clears throat> we entered that play in, into the Kaiser Award and we received that and uh, and uh, Felicia de Dam who was in the play uh, uh, went with her mother and uh, Peter McDonald the principal I couldn't go, and uh, they went to and received that award. Yeah, that's right. That was. Uh, I think that was yeah. uh, 2007, eight. I think, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I know we had Judy Bowman on. Yeah, we did. You know, we, and we yeah. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a quick question, John. Um, sure. Was Miramichi the place of destination that you, your family wanted to go to once they left Holland? Like they knew they wanted to go to Miramichi, or was it like a detour? Something happened. Uh, well, it's that's funny you ask because there is a story about that too. But my my father uh, had uh, two job offers. Uh, one was at, in uh, in a place called Newcastle at that time, uh, at, mm -hmm. a, at an old bakery called the Gem Bakery, which is long. There's still one part of the building left there, but. Uh, he also had a, a job offer in British Columbia. And the deal was then was, uh, yes, uh, we can bring these people over, but you have to have house, you have to have a job for them and you have to have housing. So uh, he had the job. Uh, and we, uh, when we arrived after 10, 10 days, I think it was on the, on a boat. And uh, one, one day it was really, really bad. I mean, we were on one of those wave things where you're just up and down. Anyway, we finally arrived in Halifax, April 11th. Uh, we got on a train to go to Newcastle first. My father was going to assess the situation there and then decide if he's going to stay or move move on. And the train went off the track. And so we were just we sat there and sat there. Uh, people went off the train, went to go shopping. He 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 said, "We're not going anywhere because we're if this train's leaving, we're going with it." So we ended up quite late in um, in Newcastle, and we were greeted by a, a minister. And uh, the Delano brothers, who ran, who uh, owned and ran the uh, bakery, and some visitors, and uh, they were very welcoming, and they they had some treats for us, and they were going to take us to a, a place in Northwest Bridge where we we're going to live temporarily until they built us a new house by the bakery, which they did. Anyway, uh, the funny story about that was uh, <clears throat> Charlie Delano. Now Charlie and Bill were uh, firemen, and they lost their lives in 1959 uh, fighting a fire. And that's another uh, historical, that's another story that I, I kind of got into as well. And um, anyway, uh, he looked back and saw a big picnic basket on the on the uh, platform, train platform. So he went back and picked it up, said, gee, maybe they, you know, they, there's food in there. And he looks in and it's my baby sister. We, we, we were so, uh, I think my parents were so overwhelmed with the welcome and everything. We almost left my baby sister behind. <laughs> So uh, once we got there, he thought, this is a wonderful place. What a welcome we received. He said, we're not going to go any further, you know. But then if he had known how far BC was, <laughs> I, I think he would have come to that same conclusion. Like being on the train, like for quite a big part of the day, and, and then having traveled, what, five or six days on a train to know. So it worked out well. So, yeah. And this became our home and is my home, and it's where – I was uh, raised and educated and uh, will uh, someday, years and years from now, be buried here. Uh, I'll never leave this <laughs> this area. This this is my spot. So. That sounds so familiar. So that's how we ended up here. <clears throat> I came here for Christmas and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I came to visit my uh, husband's family, come to do the introduction, and I never left. And I'm still here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think as you're growing up, you know, you always say, I'm, I'm going to leave the Miramichi someday. Like, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life here. And you go to college, you go to university, and you can, and then I ended up teaching here. And well, I did leave for, uh, actually, there was five years I was away. Two years, uh, four years I spent on Baffin Island. 
uh, uh, twice. I went there twice. Uh, the first time it was my, then uh, I was married before and my wife passed away in 2000, uh, almost five years ago now. Anyway, um, she, uh, so we went to a place called Painter Tongue and, uh, and really enjoyed it and um, came back two years later. And uh, the second time I thought, hmm, I think I'd like to try that again. But this time we had a boy, mm -hmm. a son, which my parents thought that we should leave behind as we went back back up there. So that's not <laughs> going to happen. So, uh, so that was four years up north. And then I spent a year in Victoria uh, to get my master's degree. But uh, so five years away, but um, no, I... I'll never leave here again. Uh, no, it's uh, it's just too too big a too big. A, I just I just love this area. I guess it's just too many things to do and plays to go to and to get involved in. And Sean's been in a couple of my plays now that uh, that I directed, and uh, and then I've been in a few of his that he's directed. And uh, yep. Yeah. As a matter of fact, speaking of history, Sean, I'm doing I'm doing that. Uh, uh, John Allen's kid. I'm doing it with uh, a group in Millerton. It's a grade seven, eight class, grade six, seven, eight class. I decided, you know, I, I tried, uh, I did drama with them in the fall and uh, did a sh short Christmas play. And I thought, gee, these kids could do more. So uh, we're just, just rehearsing now. We're just, I just started the other day, see, uh, did the reading and did scene one and two, and we're just going to move on from there. Uh, but that's, uh, that's not a true story, but the characters are all Bonafide Miramish ears. I got it out of a book and thought they were interesting characters. I thought, boy, they'd be good at a play, wouldn't it? As you've done so many times. Hmm. So, yeah, I forgot to tell you that. Yeah. All right, listeners, like I say, so so stay tuned. If you're watching this, this, and, you know, if you're watching this the day that it drops or shortly thereafter, you know, keep your eye out. That play's coming up. So be sure and mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. uh, John and Company in Millerton, because I mean, you know, I've, like I say, I would say that even if I wasn't in some of his shows, I mean, he does great work. So, uh, yeah. So like I say, so keep an eye out about that. Well, so, and so do you, Sean, you've done a lot of really very interesting historical plays and yeah, the last one we had to do on video, the last yeah, one true. I was in. That's but, true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I enjoyed that though. That was great. And you learned so much about, you know about about history of the rare machine doing these plays because you didn't didn't really think about it before. But some of these characters are really really interesting. Is and you have to make history interesting, right? Sure. Yeah, because uh, because you were in a play I did about the uh, history of uh, of St. Patrick's Church, mm. and and that was you know you, you have to you can't just tell the history. You have to mix a little bit of humor in with it, or, otherwise it's just not going to fly, right? And yeah. that's what you do. Yeah, right on. Anyway, thanks for your contribution. That, that's been great. And it has, hasn't ended. It's still continuing, right? Yes, indeed. Well, lest this become, you know, we've we, we've meandered off the path again, and we're talking about poor, you know, poor me. So that's it. Like, you know, that, that's not that's, that's not the point here, John. You know, get back on the hot seat where you belong. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I just let you cool down a bit. That's all. Yeah, well, that's, that's, it, it. that's it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but my arse is starting to get a little toasty here. So I'm going to move off of again. That. Um, yeah, I think that's the beauty of this podcast, though, because, uh, yeah, yeah, the beauty of this podcast, I think, is we're learning as we're uh, having people come and be mm -hmm. our guests, like, you know, some things that mm -hmm. I never knew that, you know, when we go to these podcasts, I'm learning, like, you know, um, there was, somebody always brings something oh, yes. new or some experience and, uh, you know, because it's what, what this podcast is about giving voice to the community, you know, what, what Mary she is and what it offers and what the histories yeah. are and uh and you talk about coming from Holland to the Miramichi and you settle here and you're going to stay here. And uh, some of the experience, even mm -hmm. for myself, like, you know, when I first came here to the Miramichi, I never had so many people call me dear. You know, it took me a while to get used to people calling me dear. Yeah. You know, good morning, dear. Hello, dear. Yeah. Thank you, dear. You know, and I'm like kind of looking around. And so there was like kind of a culture shock for the, the majority of the people calling you dear everywhere you went. So it is a, it is a good place to live, and, and so uh, and so fem and so female oriented. I mean, how's she going? You know, <laughs> at least that always struck me funny. Yeah. When say that, you know, yeah. and you know exactly yeah. what they what they were asking you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At first, Back we to you, who are you talking about? <laughs> oh, oh, <that's... laughs> oh, I thought you had a question, Chuck. I thought, I thought you did. <laughs> I figured I saved Sean for a while. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, well, I appreciate that, Sarah. You look right after me in these podcasts. Like I say, that's it. You know, um, you defended me one time before. I remember, so that's that's it. I I really appreciate that. Um, but John, I guess my question was. Uh, now that I kind of yeah. take a minute here of rambling to kind of refresh my mind. Um, so, you know, you talk about it, you talk about the great reception that you and your family got uh, when you arrived here. But I think it's only fair to say that, you know, right now, I mean, you're you're part of, uh, you know, being that great reception for a lot of people as they're coming into the community as well. Uh, you know, I know you, you, you're you working very closely with uh some of the groups that are helping, you know, Ukrainians, uh, you know, come here to the Miramichi. So maybe would you like to talk a little bit about about that? How your, you know, your your involvement in in kind of bringing some new folks uh, into the community? Yeah, well, I yeah, I, I remember there was a, a couple that uh, that used to uh, they were from Czechoslovakia. They used to have uh, a restaurant um, just not too far from where I, when I lived in Taintville, but they. Uh, um, they also had a, 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 a some kind of a food food uh, stand at the market in Newcastle, and I got to know them. And I remember the first time I met them, I, I saw them in the parking lot at the superstore, and I said, uh, "Welcome to Canada." And he said, "Oh, thank you." He said, "Well, we were in Winnipeg before, but we were looking for a place that you know was a little bit smaller and that you know better for our family." And and they 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 selected Miramichi. Now they're now in in Moncton because uh, you know they just needed to sort of go a little, they, she had to take her business another level, which she did, and in Chediac, actually, and I'm, I'm going to go see them one of these days, but it's so nice uh, because the way we were treated, it's so nice to, you know, to do the same, you know, for others that come to this area, and uh, I was on the Ukrainian committee, I'm not on the committee right now, but I was, and um, I mentioned, you know, how uh, we had a, a Susan Butler put on a big show to raise some money for them. And, I, and at one point I thought, you know what, uh, now that they're here a while and, and maybe we should have another session where we can have music again, but uh, people can actually meet these people who they helped because they raised uh, over $20,000 at that, at that first session. So we had, so I organized the second one and, and glad to do it and happy to do it. And we did quite well and raise a little bit more money because, you know, the money's starting to go down now because more families come. I think there's uh about 15 families now and still more to come. So, uh, so I, you know, I, w I was involved and will still help out wherever I can. I'm not on the committee, but I'll still help out. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of important. And, and it, it's, well, as I used to try to tell my students, uh, when you do things for other people, you feel so good yourself. It's, it's almost like, you know, you can't, you can't help but help other people. It just, it, it gives you, I often thought they should have something in in the school curriculum like that, where you just had a, a a time where you just go out and help somebody, do something good for somebody, because uh, the the rewards are good for them, but even I think even better for you. So, yeah. So wherever I can, yeah, sure, I'll I'll help out. Sure. You saying that, John, reminds me of a conversation I was having with a few different people over the past week about um, intrinsic motivation versus in extrinsic motivation. Yes, so having right. that internal yeah. reward is so much more rewarding well, and the yeah. long term consequences versus like a short term effect. Um, yeah. You speaking about this, if someone was interested to volunteer, donate or help out with a guest family, who would they contact in order to find out that information? Well, I, I think they're they're online. There there's a Facebook page you can go to. Yeah, there's a website as well that you can go to, and uh, and they'll have all the information there. Uh, and you had a guest on uh, Rachel was on one of your mm -hmm. podcasts, and she's quite involved in that. So she's another person to to uh, contact. Yeah. So yeah, there's uh, there's plenty of ways to do it. Um, yeah, and uh, you might uh, say Rachel's a good is a good lead. Yeah. And I think yeah. her daughter was on that program too. Was was uh, asking questions as well, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, Allison works with us. Yeah, she's another yeah. member of the team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, well, mindful of 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 our time and that our time is uh, drawing to a close. Um, I want to take the opportunity once again, John. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and uh yeah so and it's it's always very meaningful like i say to be able to to uh 
hear from you and to hear about the work that you're doing and, you know, and some embarrassing stories about me, uh, you know, so, uh, but we're always, like I say, we're always, it's always great to talk to you and I'll be talking to you again uh, tomorrow. Well, um, yes, you will. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be introducing him tomorrow and I won't tell that story again, Sean. Fair I, enough, fair I, enough. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that, that's okay. I mean, I'll, I'll tell a bunch of embarrassing stories about you tomorrow, so we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. able to. <laughs> right. I can handle it now, Sean. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Uh, that's it. Uh, you're mean of Turner stuff than I am, I'm afraid. Uh, but... Um, but yeah, so uh, before before we go, uh, Tasha, Sarah, anything more uh, before we uh, we close down for this week? Not for me. Just thank you so much, John, for joining us. I learned so much, and I can't wait to see more of your books coming out. Hey, thank you for your final yeah, book. Sorry. For, um... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. Thank you for your stories. I'm, I'm, I wrote down the book too. I'll look for the book. Well, thank you. Thank you. And John, okay. I guess also, uh, it's, uh, you know, maybe you mentioned this because there was a guy that was in here trying to f fix something upstairs, so I had to go show him where it was. So I apologize if I'm being redundant. But um, mm -hmm. where can you find your book? Uh, where is it for sale? Oh, the, the, it's all at uh, Mill Coal Coffee Shop. Okay. That's where, where I leave them, yeah. And um, no, I, I have one uh, about my life as well. It's called, strangely enough, In My Life. But anyway, uh, <laughs> just stories that uh, I used to tell people about, you know, what, Things about coming over from Holland and and then going to school at Harkins and then teaching at Harkins and and other things. So I have that book out. It's uh, there's it's a, it's going to be a trilogy. I, uh, book one's done, and uh, that's that's there as well. But and the third book, of course, will be there after April. Hmm. Yeah, and that got quite a few. Uh, well, they're mostly all Miramichiers, except for a few exceptions of people that. Uh, fought with Miramichiers and almost felt like they were from the Miramichi, the, the way they expressed it. So I thought, yeah, I'd like to include them as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mill Cove Coffee Shop, great place to go. Great place to have a coffee and talk and look over the book. Tremendous amount of books mm -hmm. she has there. It's, it's, it's really good, yeah. yeah. This is true. Mm -hmm. So have a look for that book if you're out and around. Uh, and again, stop by for a coffee as well. And like I say, keep a... Keep an eye out uh, for that play coming up, John Allen's Kid uh, in, in Millerton. So uh, for all of us, to all of you, thanks so much uh, for joining us this week. And we will see you next week. And uh, between that time and this, uh, take care and all the best. Thank you.